Alrighty, so I'm a dummy. There's actually two set screws up in there. Alrighty guys, so we're back at it. Today, we're gonna pull some motors off, or at least the x-axis, and we're gonna check the resolver and see if it's okay. And I know it's in here, so we need to take this stuff off. But before we get to this, we need to button up some other stuff. Like, we need to put that stuff, the z-axis cover, we need to put that back on. We need to put that little front plate over here. Let's go over here and show you. The guy that goes right there, put that back on there. And one other thing, uh, I, I was doing it and I figured I'd, I'd show you guys. For the way, way oil, you got this guy. This guy screws up into here. And what's in this is the filter, which is, oh, here it is. This guy, it's kind of neat. It's a whole bunch of like little, looks like brass spheres all pressed together. It's kind of neat little filter. I haven't seen that before, but uh, I was taking this out because I was reading that when you fill up the whey oil, which you can see right now it's low, um, you need to clean this out or just make sure there's nothing in there. So got some acetone. I wish I had my little spray bottle so I could really just, you know, spray it inside of the, uh, the filter. Basically just take this out. You would spray it, and I stole the airline off of the off of the machine, and put a little nozzle on there so I could blow it out. So it's all clean now. It's probably still got it's got some uh, my handprints on there, but it's pr probably good enough to, to keep going. Um, and just to show you too, it has two O-rings on there. You got this big fat donut-like one, and then you got a flat uh, gasket. So you got, this guy goes on top. So the, you got fat donut, then you got filter, then you got the flat O-ring or gasket, and then that goes into that, and then you go and screw it up into there. So I, I just wanna show you guys that. I'm gonna do that off camera real quick. Gonna fill up the whey oil real quick. I, uh, I bought a funnel, I needed that so I could, fill it up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick off off camera and then we'll get to installing this stuff back on the machine and then we can get to the our current issue which is that that motor and possibly the resolver that's in there so let me go do that get you guys set up and let's let's get some work done so so pro tip before we keep going um, don't get hasty with your filling up. You can see the reflection there. I got oil coming down. I'm, I'm a little bit up higher, but uh, don't be hasty and realize from, from my mistakes, realize that there's a little tiny filter in here. Which is a good thing, it helps filter you know, crap out that you might put into there, but uh, it takes some time for the, the oil to go down and. Uh, filter through there so uh, don't think that it's it's just you know one wide open hole with the only filter here um, I didn't know that and so I started doing that so uh, learn things people learn things all right let's keep going So we got the 
cover back on the z-axis had a little bit of casualty um, when you bolt this up is these bolts right here or actually there's a slot and what I did is I had a little bit too far uh, forward and I lost 7,000 horsepower or RPM so now I only have 500 RPM but so I basically un unbolted these bolts pushed it back a little bit and bolted it back up and we should have we do have clearance here now but uh, that happened when I tried to move the axis after I bolted it up and it kind of started scraping the stickers off but so we got that on and we got this front cover plate on uh, I what I did get or try to use silicone that I had before this stuff but uh, it's a little dried out so I had to go get some uh, a little small squeeze tube of it to install this guy I'll flip, flip you guys back around a little uh, pro tip if you're trying to put this back on it's best if you if you put the the uh, silicone on all the way around and then grab it from the outside the outside over here on the bottom so that way you can come down the sides of here and put it on and I, I also use two of the bolts this guy and that guy they normally go this way but I put two bolts going this way so when I grabbed it on the outside here I could go down and then push it into the into the actual wall and then it they're kind of like locators for that so I can then use bolts on this side and tighten it up and then take those out and flip them around put them on this way because you, you guys might have seen that I've been I was struggling here so I was trying to hold the, the plate like this and slide it down but when you get to a certain point it's so tight right here that you can't get your hand down there enough to go and, and put things where they need to be so I found out that uh, it's probably best to go and you just you grab it let's see if I can do it on the opposite side so you grab it like this and you slide it down the back side and push up against the wall so and I also, when I was doing the, the bolt up, I had lost this screw and I was, my OCD was gonna go crazy if I, did, if I was missing one screw. But as I found it, it actually fallen down right over here. So I got all my screws in. It's got silicone all the way around on the inside. I even used my finger and went around here for all the squeeze out and also went on the back side and up on top of here and kind of smoothed it out and filled in the crack. Just to give it a little extra layer of silicone or making sure there's a seal there so now we got that done we got that done now it's actually time to get to the motor over there and seeing how that resolver looks so I'm thinking I saw other instructions online I see that there's bolts here I don't know if, if you can see them on the camera I'm thinking about taking the weight cover off even though I don't want to it might be easier to do it that way. That way I could also get to the coupler that's down in here. I think there's a window up here on the actual uh, mount. So I think I might do that. I might take this off, take the motor off. So I think the resolver is back here. Actually, I might be able to, let's try this first. Let's, let's try and take this plate off. I hope there's enough room here to be able to get things I don't know if this is, is this plate part of it? It looks like it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little creative or you know do some exploring right now. I'm gonna take these two bolts off and we're gonna see if we can get the resolver right here. If not, then I'll just do whatever I, do. I just said I was gonna do. I'll take this off, take this, I, yeah, take all that off and take the whole motor out to be able to work on it. So let's do that and then we'll see where we go. All right. All right, so quick tip. If you try to take these bolts out, this guy and that guy, uh, at least one of them you can't get out. So it looks like we're gonna have to take the whole motor off. So, all right, let's do this.
Alrighty, so I got the motor off as you can see and I also got this back plate off. Basically you take those two bolts out and it's got this little o-ring gland right here and it's kind of shoved in there so you gotta take a little screwdriver and kind of just help work work it around to kind of like work this thing out and it pops right out. So in here, based on the, what I've researched, this is the resolver and then there's a board attached to it here. Now if you go to foot all CNC, you can get just the resolver and then rewire it into this board. Uh, you can also get these guys that are uh, remanufactured and you can get them uh, brand new both the resolver and the little board. It's kind of hard to see, I think, in the, there's, there's a better shot. So you can see the, here's the board, there's the resolver. So this board's held in by those two screws right there. And then, I don't know if you can see down in there, but you can see there's a little, little uh, probably at like two o'clock and like 10 o'clock, you can see there's some screws there. The little cams that'll turn and lock it into place. So there's there's four of them in each you know corner. Uh, so I'm gonna take that out and just to show you, here is the resolvers from Fidal CNC. Here's the part number ENC008. So this is a brand new assembly. I got two of them, like I told you guys, I was gonna do. So we're gonna at least replace the X, but it might end up. Um, when I turn this back on, I only have the main power on the back. I don't have the actual machine turned on. Um, we'll put this back together. We'll probably recycle the machine, turn it back on, cold start it, and see if we get any errors. Um, I bought two because I think I might need to replace the Y as well. But I'm gonna do one step at a time, replace this, see how it looks, do we get any errors? Heck, I might even just replace it just to be um, on the safe side. I think I was occasionally getting it on the Z. I don't know if it's just because right now I'm in you know setup mode and getting everything everything together. But I'm gonna go ahead and change this one out. I'll take it out. I'll show you guys what it looks like, and then we'll get a new one. And we'll put it in there and do all those steps I just did backwards. Put it all back together. So uh, let's go. All right, so it, it took a minute. Uh, I guess this is what, what I get for getting a machine that I don't have you know, total documentation for, at least for how to do some of the maintenance stuff. But, see if it'll stay, it'll stay. Awesome, okay, ho hopefully it won't fall down. But basically, I took this plate off, and then you saw me fumbling around trying to get the wires out, because this guy was still on top of there. And I was trying to get the resolver out and then I, I recall that oh wait there's also the coupler that's right here that holds the shaft of the uh, resolver onto the shaft of the motor so I was trying to figure out a way how to get it out you saw me probably taking the bolts off of the, this shroud right here they're still off but I think it's got some kind of gasket material so it's kind of still stuck on there but basically what I've learned through fiddling around oh I, I also took this guy off which I probably didn't need to do um, but the same as this guy where you just you just shove a screwdriver into the side here and you kind of wiggle it up and it pops off well the same thing happens with this guy you just there's an o-ring here you know you just gently put a, a, a screwdriver on the side and I kept the shroud on here so I was going you know evenly on this side and then over here on this side and kind of wiggling it you know and it popped it off and so now it's it's off so now I can easily get to the resolver so learn from my uh, exploration that all you gotta do is pop that guy off well first take the motor out take these guys out which are going through that guy and going through that guy and they go down to here those bolt holes so that it goes into this which is part of the actual body that's more or less just a sleeve that allows conduit and wires and things to attach and go through so just take these guys out which are you know the two spots up here pop that guy off pop that guy off 
And then all you gotta do is unscrew the board, which I already did when it was still kind of together. Oh, and so there's there's actually, there's three cams, not four like I said. So there's one there, one over here, and then one over there. So I got, and then you do that, you take the screw out that's in here. I still, I still haven't found it yet. Oh, I don't think I can turn it. I can't turn it, but you can, you might be able to see it there on the right side, all the way up by the motor. But I gotta take that little set screw out, or unscrew it, and then you take that guy out. When you put it back in, you don't want to screw up your resolver. So what you want to do first is stick the um, the shaft of the resolver into the coupler. Don't tighten it yet, but tighten the cams up here to lock it in place, and then tighten that guy. That way, you're not binding the the, the shaft of the resolver and it's you know twisting and binding. So. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish up taking this guy out, and then we might look at it, you know, if, if it's pretty bad, I'll show you guys. If not, then uh, I might just replace it and then uh, start the machine back up. But, uh, okay, so we're here. We're a lot closer than I thought I was gonna get, because I once I got to this guy, I was thinking, oh dear, I'm gonna have to go figure out, call somebody to figure out how to do this. Um, but we're there, we got it apart. I just need to finish it up, and uh, let's see what it looks like. Oh dear, that was a bear. Holy man, I had to, like, I, I feel like I felt bad for trying to pry, but I kept having to pry to get the coupler to disengage with this guy. And I think it might've been installed in there a little uh, aggressively, or it might've been in there for a while, I don't know. But it's kind of hard to hold the camera and, and show you guys, but this guy sounds really gravelly, like when you spin it, you can hear the You do that, and then it says that it's not supposed to have, uh, I think, when I was reading the instructions, I don't know if this is it. Oh yeah, that right there. So the, the instructions from Fidal CNC uh, tell you to go and check it, and it shouldn't have two thou of play but in, in any direction, but this guy, this guy definitely, I don't know if I can really show it, but I can definitely feel play. And so I tried to compare that to these guys, the brand new ones, and I could sit here and I can spin this and it's nice and smooth, and I can't move it back and forth. So I know that's definitely good, especially when it's compared to this guy. So this one was definitely needed to be replaced so, now that I learned all these things, and maybe you guys did too, maybe you guys are in the, in the comment section you know, yelling at me because I'm not doing it the right way, but uh, that's what it looks like without the motor on there, that's where the coupler is. A little tiny set screw hole there. I got the, I, I had to go search for a super tiny Allen wrench. I didn't realize I needed one so small, and luckily I, I had one. Um, so yeah. <laughs> now that we have that out, I'm gonna try and clean my hands up. I also I was trying to not pry too much with a screwdriver in a electronics area because I don't want any shavings or anything. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and clean up my hands a little bit, and we'll try and we'll start installing this guy back in there, or the new guy, um, in there. Button it back up and just reverse all of those steps to put it back on here and then hopefully this machine turns on with a, a happy face. So, all right, here we go. so I'm a dummy there's actually two set screws up in there and that's part of the reason why it was so hard to take out the old one and put in the new one you saw me fumbling around here 
So these, this little tiny set screw, I took one of them out because I, I, or at least I took the one that I thought was the only one out because I was trying to figure out how far the shaft of the resolver was going down in. So it got in like halfway and I was like, why, why won't it go in? So I, I was just trying to, you know, gently push it up with the screwdriver. So I was turning the, the bottom, the coupler to turn the motor around to try and, you know, kind of wiggle it up the shaft. And then I noticed there is an extra set screw up there. Let's, <laughs> I'm gonna probably turn it some more and make sure there's not three of them. There's probably only two, but uh, knowing me, you know, there's still stuff that I haven't found yet. So learn from my mistakes. There's at least two screws holding the coupler on. You know, this guy can come off. And so it, it, once I found that one screw and unscrewed it a little bit, oh man, this guy just slid right in. I could, I could tighten these cams. Super nice, super easy. So yeah, let's, uh, let's keep going and button this thing back up. All right, so quick update. I had to turn the camera off because the battery was dying. Um, and I actually had to put the motor back into position to be able to put this line, the actual bolts that bolt it to, let's see if we can get you a good shot. Those bolts, I needed to put it back in position so I could actually bolt it back to this, this housing right here. Uh, because it, this guy is so stiff. I can't I couldn't rotate it when it was sitting over there But another thing I noticed was if you look at this connector You can see that it's uh, it's pointing this way out towards the camera and If you look over here at the old guy Look at that it's going out that way and there's a reason for that. And it looks like I got some more work to do. So we gotta take that guy and rotate it to go this way, back and forth, because you can see here, it's gonna hit that lip. When I put this cap back on, it's gonna hit and it's gonna cause issues. So what I did realize using the other one to look at it already has the pins open right here. So all I gotta do is take this guy out, rotate it around and stick it in here and solder it in. And that might be as easy as it is. Um, it's either that or maybe I'll call Football CNC and see if they could help me out. If not, maybe I'll just do it myself. But uh, yeah, looks like I need to take uh, some stuff apart. Actually, no, I might leave it the way it is. Well, actually, no, I would still have to take it off to put the big long bolts in there. But I'm gonna probably leave it the way it is, unbolt just the board, take it out, and then see if we can uh, do some localized uh, desoldering and soldering and making things look pretty. So, uh, here we go. Alrighty, so change of plans. I called Fidal CNC and they have some remanufactured um, resolvers that have this kind of connector on it where it's going side to side. So I talked to them, they're really helpful, really friendly. They're gonna ship me out those and I'm gonna ship them back these new ones. Um, it also saved me some money, that, that's nice. So I got two of them on the way. I'm gonna send these two back I'm also gonna send back the ones I took out, that guy right there, and if I take out the Y-axis one, um, I actually wanna go see how, how difficult that might be. Might not be too bad. I, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the, I thought the motor might be a little bit further back in, but it looks kinda doable. So I've I'm, I'm been thinking a lot about maybe just replacing all the resolvers 
just to have them replaced at some known time. And so in the future, I can just, you know, rely on them, you know, at, at this point being, you know, set and uh, corrected or fixed or, you know, good. So that's a quick update. I wasn't thinking that this, this, this is going to be a, a two-part video, but uh, I'm going to probably wrap it up here. Off camera, I'll, I'll do my tidying up, take out the one I just installed, get them together, put them back in the box that I have. And uh, because it's going to be a couple of days before Fidal CNC has it shipped to me, um, it's on its way. It's just going via UPS and not, you know, it's not being overnight because I don't want to pay for that. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for following my journey. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I post a lot more pictures on there than I do videos on YouTube. So uh, hopefully you guys are, are enjoying this or learning with me. And uh, hopefully this might help somebody. So thanks again. And I'll see you guys next time.